Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I am Derek the Knitwit and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on loom knitting hat. There are several different looms that you can use. Um, you can buy them individually or they come in a kit. You can get them from Walmart, Michaels, Hobby Lobby, any craft store. I tend to stick to Michaels um, for the the bigger prices just because Michaels almost always has some kind of 40 or 50 percent off cheap one. I can also get them at um, Walmart. The thing that I don't like at Walmart, if, if you look at like this is one of the loop things you see here, the uh, it's kind of a flat top with the divot there. These are ones that came from Michaels. The ones that Walmart has, they tend to be almost a like come almost to a point like a I want to say it's the brook from chess. It's just they the yarn will catch on it a lot easier, and so I I don't like that. But this is generally, you know, a size that you would use for an infant, um, make arm warmers, something like that. This is generally the size I will use for, you know, an older child. Um, I mean, it fits. There's sometimes like an adult with a smaller head. This is the one that I normally do for an adult. Um, I've used it. I, I broke a peg the other night, so I'm not messing with this until I get it replaced, but so I can transfer that hat that's in process over. This one I use if I want to make a big slouchy beanie or sometimes the cowl, you know, that comes up just over the head like an infinity scarf would be the size I would use for that. And because I broke my other hat. Other loom, I'm going to be making a big slouchy hat out of this. The yarn I'm using today, I believe I got this from Joann's, got it on clearance. I went through about six months ago and bought every single thing of yarn that they had on clearance. Uh, so I, I'm good on yarn for a while. This is Baby Hugs um, by Red Heart, and it is the jelly bean color. It's a medium size four, if you're interested in that. Now, when you're doing a hat on a loom, I have two different ways that I'll make a hat. I will do like just a single, if I'm doing a single strand of like the size four yarn, I will make it twice as long or a little over twice as long as I want and then fold it in half at the end to make it a double knit. But what I'm doing today is I'll use, and what I do for a lot of my hats, is I will use two strands at the same time, and it just, it automatically, you know, gives it that double thick thing. Plus, I can, can it create the brim, like you'll see on this hat, how it's folded over, and, you know, like that. And I can do that when I have the, the uh, two strands of yarn. Now, I could do that with a single strand of yarn, but if the, uh, the yarn is thin, then it's going to make for a very thin hat. The other two things that you'll need is the hook. Now this come when you buy a loom, it comes with it. And the thing that doesn't come with the round looms, um, I've always said it come with the infinity loom, like making blanket. They refer to it as a tension rod. And I have found that if I take an old ink pen that doesn't work anymore, like one of the old stick pens and take both pieces off, you know, so you can see through it, and it works perfectly for that. And what it, the tension rod does is one, it makes it a lot easier to, you know, thread the loom basically, but it also keeps you from making the, ten, the stitches, you know, too tight, too loose. They, sorry, they are even. And so it ends up makes the finished project look a lot nicer. And Matt, you may see Max over here. He's decided that he's going to not be antisocial for once and he's going to be in the middle of everything. So the first thing I need to do is figure out what Max did with the ends of my two balls of yarn. Now the reason I have so much loose yarn is instead of taking the skein and re-rolling it into a ball, I just reached in and pulled out to find the end, which created a lot of basically yarn vomit over here. The reason was when I'm working with two strands, if it's not already in a ball, 
having it pull from the center keeps the balls from twisting up and tangling as I'm, you know, feeding the yarn. But, you know, the way things are, you know, with yarn, you know, with any kind of craft project is, you know, you figure out which way works best for you. But I've got the two ends of my yarn and I'll take my fancy ink pen tensioner and, you know, you feed the yarn through it and, I've always found if I get it started and then suck on the other end, it pulls the yarn through. Then you'll just make a simple slip knot. Um, you, you don't need to give it a lot of extra string at this end because you're not actually going to have to weave this in at the end. When you fold over to make the brim, Max wants to play fetch with me. When you fold it over to make the end, this will actually get tucked in to the brim. Now on your loom, you, you know, you'll have, you know, you have the pegs that go in the circle and then you have a peg off to the side. This is basically just, a, I use it as an anchor peg. So you'll take that slip knot and put it on there and just tighten it. And then what you're going to do now is you, with the tension, you just, you just hold on to the tension rod. You don't have to worry about keeping tension on He's really getting into my yard over here. Um, my cat thinks he's a dog and plays fetch, but doesn't like to give the ball back. Okay. So you're just going to, I think they refer to this as e-wrapping, where you just take the yarn and wrap it around each one. And I go in a clockwise pattern. Sorry, I go in, I go counterclockwise when you're wrapping it. So you're trying to see how you can show. Now when you're wrap when you're wrapping the thread, you'll see, you know, there's this one strand on this side, you know, not one strand, but you know, one here. And there's two there's two piece strands of yarn, but it's just looped once. If you look on the back side, See if I can, you know, you can see where it, there's two loops, or two strands. You want to make sure that the side where that has the, the little divot there, um, is the side that only gets the one strand. So you just loop it around all the way around. And it is a lot easier when you're using and a lot quicker using the, you know, the pin barrel or the tension rod, whatever you want to call it. Um, if you do it by hand, it's just, it's, to me, it's always it's been slower. Now, when you get back around, you're going to go around a second time. You see what I'm, I'm starting the second one around. And then you see on the inside now, you know, you can see there's the two from the first round, the two from the back. So that's always on the smooth side or the inside of the, the loop. So you go ahead and make it all the way around. Hey, Max, I don't know what you did with the ball. When I got Max, you know, when you first get a kit, you know, you buy all the you know, all the different kitten toys, you know, you spoil them. Max had no interest in any toy whatsoever until we found these fuzzy sparkly balls that came in, like, I bought a pack of 12 balls from Walmart for like 10 bucks. And out of those 12 balls, there were three sparkly balls, sparkly fuzzy balls, and those were the only ones he'd play with. And I got frustrated because, you know, you'd go buy a 12 pack for $10 and then there would be three balls out of it that I could use. So there's, you know, the not, other nine, I couldn't use anything to do with. I found out PetSmart had the same sparkly, you know, little sparkly fuzzy balls, much bigger size, but they had them where I could buy just the individual ball. 
And for the longest time, that was the only toy he would play with. He wouldn't play with anything else. I tried all kinds of toys. Now, catnip bubbles, stuff with catnip, you know, he plays it for a little bit. So I got Little Miss, and Little Miss taught him how to play with other toys, basically. Okay, so when you make it around twice, what I do is I'll take, you know, this is where I am finishing the circuit, and this is, was the beginning of, you know, where I started it, because, you know, here's my anchor peg. I will just wrap it around that first one again several times just to hold the arm. Because what you're going to do now, because you basically, you you know, you thread it in one direction and then you hook it in the other. So now that I've, you know, this was the last one that I threaded, that will be the first one that I hook. So I take my hook and you put the, this is hard to do backwards. You take this little hook and it goes in, that's where the divot comes in, in the pegs comes in handy because it fits the hook and it lets you get behind the yarn easily. And you'll just take the bottom, you know, the bottom loop and pull it over the top like that. And then just push it down. Move the camera down so I can get a better angle. This is really awkward to do backwards. So you'll just go around the entire loom until you get all of the all of the loops turned over. I'm going to pause you for just a moment while I finish this loop. Okay, that was the wrong way to throw the ball. Okay, so when you get to the end, this is where you're going to, you know, thread the next um, circle around. Now, if you were to just keep starting, you know, in the the round and ending it, you know, at the same spot every time, you're going to need what's called a ladder effect. And this doesn't have it, but in between, you know, where you're starting and you're ending one, this space, instead of being uniform all the way around, you would have one of these two columns that's spread further. And it, it doesn't look good. At, and, it's, you know, it's not going to make the hat unravel or anything it just it's it doesn't look nice and it has to do with you know obviously with the tension between when you're pulling the loops over and you can always go in and tighten the the you know the loop you know manually but what I found the easiest way to do is once I'm done with one thing I will just thread you know five or six of them and then loop those over now, doing this, that first one is going to be really tight because you don't have a lot of give in it, which, you know, you want to kind of disperse the, the tension out a little bit. But so once you do that this handful, looping over like normal, then you just go back and do a the, you know, the full circle all the way around. I hear my phone over here alerting me. Emails or game notifications, I'm not sure which. I think it's funny that it's the, the sneeze. I like it. Um, it amuses me because when I'm out in public and my phone goes off, almost always someone who hears it will say, bless you, thinking it's me. I just tell them, no, my phone has allergies. So I've got my full round on here, and what you'll see is, you know, that's the peg right there where we started the first round, but now we're over here. So it's just moved it around a little bit. And you will just keep doing that and looping over. Like I said, I'm not, it's, just so you remember, you know, you see this goes in that and pulls up. Now, if you find that you, you've made a mistake 
and you need to back up, say that you've skipped a peg on accident and it's the tension is too tight to be able to add the wrap in there, you know, you'll just, you'll take your hook and you'll put under that loop right there. Get it in and I'll show you. You see where it's under that loop and then you just pull it back over. It's, if you knit or crochet, it's just the same as if, you know, if you're tinking with that and then, you know, you pull it off. So what you'll do now, just my camera here. Since I just did a full round all the way around, now it's another time for another partial round. And they don't have to be, you know, every, it's not like when you're adding stitches, when you're knitting or crocheting, where you need to do it routinely, like every, you know, five stitches or four stitches. I just do, you know, on my smaller one, I do every six just because I like pattern. And I can't remember offhand, you know, what would be, you know, divisible on this one. Just do, you know, three or four, five or six, however many you feel like, just not a full thing around. And basically, just so that you reset your starting point to a different peg each time. And if you do a couple row, full rows in a row without resetting it, that doesn't, it, that's not going to be a problem. It's when you do, you know, you know, four or five or more, you know, rows without resetting the starting point. That is when you start noticing the ladder effect. So you'll just keep doing this until you get to about three to four inches of hat made. Now, at some point, you know, when you get a little bit of a length on it, you'll see that the anchor point is keeping the hat kind of pulled up on that side. And then you can just go ahead and pull that off and just let it come through. It's not going to unravel. You just, you know, once you get a couple rows on there, you don't really need it anchored down anymore. You just go through, make three or four inches, and that's when we'll fold over and make the broom of the hat. And so I'm going to put you on pause for a little bit, and I'll be back to you when I'm ready to show you that part. Okay, now that you're down, you've got about this much done, just two to three inches, you're going to make sure that you finish the round back at your anchor point just so that you've had a full complete round from where you started so you'll take this and you know, you pull that up go ahead and pull that knot out and because you just you just don't want to make a bump with it when you're taking the end of it if you did the very end you'll see you know these loops here like this at, at the, you know the bottom stitch you'll take it that bottom loop and put it back over the peg so that you know, you're making your second round. And you'll do that going all the way around, just taking the very bottom loop and pulling it on the top. And make sure that you get them, you know, you're not twisting in, so that these stay straight. If you get it off by one or two pegs, that's not going to be that big of a deal, but any more than that, and you'll see an obvious twist to the brim where it won't lie flat. So you're just going to make it all the way around. Now, if you're doing with just a single thread that's a thin yarn, like a size four, then you're not going to fold to make the broom, the brim. You'll just make, you know, keep knitting the same pattern all the way through, like how you started, until the hat is a little more than double the length of what you want. And once it's that long, that's when you'll take and fold over like you're doing here. And this would actually be the final process before closing off a hat. Uh, that is, you know, just the, the single yarn. If you want, I can actually make a tutorial just for that one, 
or if you're just having, you know, have any questions, you can put it in the comments and I can try and explain it a little bit better. Okay. But now that I've made it all the way around, you know, we've got the, the two rows, like when we first were looming, you know, first started and you'll just take and put that over. Now this first loop, because it's still attached to this, it's going to be, you know, more baggy. So you just go ahead and pull a little bit tight. And then just work yourself all the way around. And now Little Miss No Name is going to get in on helping me. She's feeling a lot better after she had her surgery last month. Both her and Max have been beyond the zoomies. They were in what I refer to as crackhead mode this morning. I was sitting on the couch and these two little cats that Max weighs about 10 pounds. She weighs about eight and a half. Moved the couch several inches while I was sitting on it. But now that it's the eat, you know, starting to get on later in the day, they're in, they're mellowing out a little bit. And they will pretty much be fairly calm, sleeping most of the rest of the day. Around this evening, they'll pick up a little bit. Probably about an hour or so before bedtime, little miss will come and lay on me and just want to cuddle. And then when it's bedtime, it's when they get their wet food. And I have to, you know, keep them separated because Max will, Little Miss is still on kitten food. In the morning, I mix a scoop of adult food, a scoop of kitten food in each bowl because I'm just not going to battle them both meals at bedtime because that's when they get wet food. Now they both get the same wet food. But Little Miss will get just kitten food and Max will get just adult food. So I keep them separate at that point. And so Little Miss will lay in bed with me while she's eating. And she usually goes to sleep. And she'll sleep for probably about 10, 15 minutes. Then she will get up, primarily because that's when Max will start with his yowling that he does every night when I turn the light off. And I have no idea why. It's every night. But then she'll get up and play for about half an hour. Then she'll come back and cuddle until I fall asleep. Okay. So now that I've got the whole hat, this is, you've got your brim done. So I would, you'll go back to loom knitting the rounds, just like how you started making the brim. At this point, you'll do it until it's the length that you want. And generally, for me, I just make sure it's a little bit longer than my hand. Um, occasionally I'll just stick it on my head and see how it feels. I believe it's that for an adult size, it's you know, between eight to 10 inches long. I have a chart somewhere. I'm not sure. I'll have to look for it. That just gives me a guideline of how long to make hats for what different ages. But since this one I'm making on the bigger loom, it'll be okay. It'll be bigger and a little bit slouchier. But, you know, you make the hat how you want. Some people like it snug. Some people like it with extra room so that they can fold the brim again or just be slouchy. Or, say, if you've got long hair, you're going to want a hat with a little bit longer to it, especially if you want to, you know, fit a ponytail up in there with you. So, I will let you guys get to knitting this, you know, loom knitting this, and I'll come back to you when I am at the end and ready to cast off and close up the hat. Okay, and once you get to the point where, you know, you've got the length that you want and you make sure that you finish your round back at, you know, the anchor point just so that you've made a complete circle. So what you do now is you will cut the yarn, give yourself a little bit of length because you've got to be able to thread all the loops. So you, you can start with a smaller one. It just gets to be a stretch at first or about halfway through and then it gets easier again. I always figure it's easier to cut a little bit longer if I've got the yarn to spare. Get my handy dandy little. I'm not sure where I got these scissors. They are the oddest little things. Um, that they uh, look like I thought they had a ruler marking on the side of them, but that's just the texture. They're sharp. Um, points too. I got them online somewhere. I think for free, I'm not sure. I've had them for a while, but 
So you'll just cut your yarn and put those up so I don't poke myself with them because I'm good at that. You'll need your yarn needle. And I have this odd thing is I, well, all my yarn needles are in here. But for whatever reason, when I finish, I always keep my little scrap pieces of yarn till it fills up and then I throw it away. I'm just odd. But it amuses me watching it fill up. And then when I can't fit any more in there, then I just throw it away and start over. So you'll, of course, you know, thread your needle. Okay, and I know we all do this. I know I'm not the only one that licks my arm. I can't be. The one thing I like, though, is I will not break yarn with my teeth. Just the sound of yarn, your teeth squeaking on yarn, that's like nails on a chalkboard to me. And I have that chills thing going down my spine just thinking about it. Like, my teeth hurt now just thinking about it. So what you do now, basically, is you just go in to each one and stick the needle through it and pull it off. And then go through each one. And it doesn't really matter which direction you go at this point. Oops, got a little ambitious there and knocked it off the peg without getting the yarn needle on it first. I'm pathologically clumsy, so stuff like that happens quite a bit. And I think pathologically clumsy actually is a diagnosis my doctor gave me at one point. I have a couple of random neurological issues that affect me, like physically, not mentally probably affect me only too. I have ADHD. There's no telling. But, like, I will never pass a field sobriety test. Part of the thing, you know, the field sobriety test where they have you stand on one foot with your eyes closed and touch your nose. If I stand with my feet together or on one foot and close my eyes, I immediately fall over. It's a, it's called a positive Romberg sign, and it's a, actually a sign of a neurological issue. i not aware of my body in relationship to space without my vision. And that's just, I mean, it's not uncommon. It's just quite funny because I have failed field sobriety tests. I used to work in a prison and I got off work one day and I'm in my, I was visitation officer. So I was in my class B. So, you know, the uniform that made me look like an actual cop. So my fancy uniform, driving home at like midnight because I'd worked a double, and I get pulled over. I think I had sneezed, and when I sneezed, I crossed the outside line, and I sneezed a couple times in a row, and each time I sneezed, I jerked the steering wheel because I frequently have violent sneezes, or when I sneeze, they're frequently violent. See what I was talking about? You need a longer thread because I'm getting, I'm about the halfway point and I'm getting, I have to be careful that I don't pull the thread all the way out of the needle. But it's, once I make it past the halfway point, then it'll be a lot easier. Uh, but anyway, so I get pulled over by this officer because I swerved, I crossed the outside line from sneezing, which he didn't know I was sneezing. So anyway, I'm in my uniform. I very obviously had just got off work. I mean, the cops all out there knew about the prison, obviously. And, of course, you know, if you had anything to drink, no, sir, I just got off work. And let me not say there's not alcohol in prisons because, you know, inmates get creative. But I'm not about to try jailhouse hooch, and especially not at work. So anyway, he didn't have the breathalyzer, so he had me do the field sobriety test. And I, of course, failed. Never mind the fact that I was exhausted from working 16 hours in a prison and... Um, it was late at night and I was tired and I was going to have to be back up and getting ready for work in eight hours and I had to be back at work at eight hours. So I didn't even get to sleep for eight hours. Um, you know, I had that neurological issue. So I fall over. 
So he makes the, he calls for someone to bring out the breathalyzer because this is kind of a small town, not everyone had one at the time because this was back in, I quit working in the prison in 2003, so it was a while. So anyway, he brings it out and of course I blow clean. I'm clumsy, not drunk. And he maybe did it twice, blew clean both times. So then he wanted to send me to the local ER to get a blood test and to do that, he had to get his chief's permission, who had to come out there, who came out there, especially when he saw, when he reported that it was someone from the prison. Took one look at me, took, you know, the, talked to me, looked at, you know, the thing went on. And I explained to him the neurological issue, which it's not like I get a card from my doctor that says, hey, you know, I'm clumsy. Um, and he was just like, dude, leave him alone. Just let him go. Home. So he let me go. Now, this part of the area a small, you know, kind of rural area and highway patrol would let, would had agreements with some of the small towns to let them patrol parts of the interstate in their area. So I get on the road and of course I'm still sneezing randomly throughout this. It's like allergy season or something. And I get pulled over. I mean, I, I go not even a mile down the road, start sneezing in, get pulled over again by the same cop who makes me go through the whole field spreading. T- I mean, at that point, I think he was just being a dick. So anyway, so you have it all the way off. Basically, at this point, I mean, you just pull it tight. Now, I have done it before. Like, if you are making this for someone that has a ponytail, I have taken, like, a handful of, um, I used to use coloring pencils. You know, <sighs> about that much, you know, put rubber band, rubber band around it, put it in the hole, and pull it tight around it, tight around that way. Because that way, it keeps opening so that they can put the ponytail through it. But 99 to percent of the time I'm closing it all the way. Now this is the outside of the hat. So I don't want, you know, this on the outside. So I'll just, um, now you also notice it looks kind of funky at first, you know, it's got some spacing areas. See, that's kind of what the ladder effect looks like, but that's just from it getting pulled off. As you pull it through, you know, just stick the needle through the center, reach in, you know, you're going to turn inside out, figure out where the other, into the yarn needle whip and pull the yarn through. And so, I mean, I'm sure we've all closed up hats at this point. So you're just kind of making it look pretty on the inside, closing up any of the gaps and tying it off. And it just Tie a couple knots in it because just so that it doesn't unwind. Get the handy little scissors out. Trim it off. I usually leave a little bit of a tail just ow. See, you talk about clumsy. I just pinched myself with the scissors. Didn't cut myself, but pinched them. So anyway, put these up before I need stitches. So that turn your hat inside out. So that's what it looks like now. It's all closed up. And you have a hat. So this one, yeah, it is got a little extra in there. And I have a, you know, palm maker, so I can make a, a ponytail, or not ponytail, I can make a palm to put on there, a little puff ball. Um, if you don't have the palm maker, you know, I've used a CD before wrapping it around that way. I mean, it's just however you want to make the palm. You don't have to. I generally only make a, put a palm on there if I am making for someone who requests one. So, but anyway, this is how, you know, you make the loom knit, just the basic beanie with a brim. Um, next time, I think I'm going to show you how to loom knit just, you know, basic scarf. I've still got plenty of yarn left this color, so I'll probably make a matching scarf to go with it. So I'm curious to see any of the projects that y'all made with, make with this to do the loom knitting. I know that, you know, a lot of people, I mean, if they're already crocheting or knitting, they may not want to get a loom knitting. I like, I like loom knitting. It's brainless. It's how I first learned, um, in, you know, the yard, yarn art. And anytime, if you deal with someone that maybe has some mobility issues, older people, people that have, you know, broken arms, sprained wrist, kids, just for whatever reason that maybe have, you know, not quite as coordinated, loom knitting is great. It's, it takes a lot of the hard, like technical aspect out of it. Um, and it's just a great way to get started. So anyway, thanks for watching the tutorial and um, thanks for you know, sticking around. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subs- um, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified. 
and go ahead and like the video if you liked it and leave a comment. Let me know what you're up to. Have a great evening.